Sister Trika is here with us this week. I'll be working on week 10's entry in the Faith Based Box 12 week devotional Firefield Generation, sub box number five. I'll be reading scriptures from this modern English creative journaling Bible, The Promises of God. And I'm using items from Michelle's Faith Based Sticker Shop, Ben Von Alley. Use my PR code VE20 to save on your purchases. And we're working on Where is the Firefield Generation? And this is week nine. So take out your devotional book, Bible, journal, planner, and join me in week 10's entry. This week's scriptures are Mark 11, 22 through 24, Acts 3, and reference with Google, Robert William Schombach, C.M. Ward, and T.L. Osborne. The focus scriptures for the week are John 14, 10, John 14, 12, Mark 11, 22 through 24, Acts 3, 1 through 10. And reference on Google, Robert William Schombach, C.M. Ward, and T.L. Osborne. The devotional reads, the Firefield generation resembled the generals of the past like Robert William Schombach. This was a man that walked in an anointing that displayed the true power of God. He became born again on a street corner during an altar call by evangelist C.M. Ward, who later ordained Robert as a pastor. He was mentored by T.L. Osborne and others like A.A. A. Allen, who moved in the supernatural power of God. Bro Schombach set up tents and ministered in many poor neighborhoods. Within his ministry, there were several accounts of the wheelchair-bound walking, those that were deaf gained their hearing, blind eyes were open, and many that were spiritually bound were set free. There was a specific account of a woman who had an institutionalized son that loved chocolate bars. She gave Bro Schombach a bar and he preached with, with it in his pocket one night and gave it back to her. When she visited her son and gave him the candy bar to eat, he was immediately healed. The prayer for this week, Father, thank you for connecting me with like-minded fire-filled believers in Jesus' name. Amen. The focus scripture reads, John 14, 10, titled, Jesus, the way to the Father. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who lives in me does the works. John 14, 12, truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me will do the works that I do also, and he will do greater works than these because I am going to my Father. Mark 11, 22 through 24, titled The Lesson from the Fig Tree, Jesus answered them, Have faith in God, for truly I say to you, whoever say this to the mountain, be removed and be thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that what he says will come to pass. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, Believe that you will receive them and you will have them. Acts 3, 1 through 10, titled, The Lame Man Healed at the Temple Gate. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer. A man, lame from birth, was being carried, whom people placed daily at the gate of the temple called Beautiful, to ask for alms from those who entered the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. Peter, gazing at him with John, said, Look at us. So he paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but I give you whatever I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He took him by the right hand and raised him up. Immediately, his feet and ankles were strengthened. Jumping up, he stood and walked and entered the temple with them, 
walking and jumping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praised God. They knew that it was he who sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement and what happened to him. From the podcast with Michelle and Audrey, Healing Through the Word, Audrey said, Let the faith of God be in you. We are being used by the Holy Spirit to do his work in the earth. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. What are we asking in prayer? Our prayer should be, let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But there are a lot of things we are seeing that we know are not in the kingdom of God. For a believer, death is not our final portion. We are here on assignment to do the will of the Father, and then we transition to live eternally with Him. We are in the land of the dying to go to the land of the living. That's where we will live forever. It's our choice. But as believers, we already know. Michelle also said from the podcast, Don't let fear paralyze you. Move forward and do what God has portioned you to do and be a part of the fire-filled generation. It is very important to remain humble in our walk. We should always be pointing people to Jesus and not ourselves and not get caught up in being glorified. Say thank you, but it's not me, but the Christ in me that is doing the work. Our names and titles should never matter. We should always lift up the name of Jesus. It's easy to become prideful and get a big head when people see you operating in the supernatural. They displace that power and associate it with you, the person, instead of the person of Jesus working through you. To God be the glory. And here is my week 10 entry. Give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and turn on your notification bell to be notified whenever I upload a video. Thanks for spending your time with me. Until next time, I hope today your heart desires.